What's up? My name is Matt. Welcome back to the channel. This is Hidden Light. We are nearing 1,000 subscribers, which is very exciting because I think that 1,000 subs, I can turn the ads off and you won't have to watch ads before or during or whatever our videos, which is awesome because I hate ads. Shit's the worst. So subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, okay, to business. I watched a video on Matt Day's channel, which we will link uh, him somewhere, where he talks about the theory of catch and release for cameras, which really resonated with me. And I, I, I felt like I had to speak on this, to respond, because catch and release for camera gear is absolutely something more of us should be doing. A lot of photographers have this sort of tendency to buy a piece of gear and keep it and put it on the shelf and never use it and buy another piece of gear and use it for the one thing that they wanted it for and then put it on the shelf and then never use it again. And one, this creates scarcity, which drives up prices, which I hate. And two, it takes perfectly good gear that someone could be using and it just sits there like sad on a shelf. Like y'all remember Toy Story? Toys need to be used, okay? So I realized I've been doing this catch and release program sort of like subconsciously for a long time. One, because I own a camera store. So like the cameras that come in, I can play with and then, but I don't have to keep them. And I don't expect to keep them most of the time. I can fall in love with one and use it for a little bit and then let it go. And it's so freeing and it also enables me to enjoy the moments of gear acquisition syndrome without it completely draining my wallet. Because I can spend a bunch of money on a camera like Matt Day does this with the GFX 100, which is a pretty expensive kit, right? To buy the body and the lens and big enough memory cards to deal with it, you're into some money. But he knew going into it that he probably wasn't going to keep it. So you can say, all right, I'm gonna justify I don't know, picking them out, $1,000, $10,000, whatever's good for you, that I will rotate through camera gear. So, you know, like I'm gonna buy a GFX 100 with a couple of lenses, call it an easy 10 grand. <laughs> buy it, shoot it, learn what it's good for, learn what it's not so good at, learn when it might be useful to you, and if it's not most of the time, let it go. Resell it before it's lost all of its value. Like this applies to digital gear as well as film gear. Because if you hold on to a camera, like let's say, you guys remember like the D300, which is a Nikon consumer body, prosumer body. Those are worth like a hundred bucks now. And when they came out, they were worth like thousands of dollars. <laughs> uh, don't hold on to stuff forever. Use it, shoot it, don't break it hopefully, and then let it go. Same thing applies to like fancy, you know, like you want to, you've always wanted to try that Leica. Buy it, you know, get it over with. Spend the five grand or whatever it's gonna cost to get yourself a used Leica with a lens or two. See what it's like. Give yourself a year, which is what I do. Give yourself, I mean, it's, it's gotta be enough time for you to really learn the gear and feel what it wants and what it's good for. And then when you're done with it, sell it and buy the next thing. It lets you do this like, the gear acquisition thing sometimes is more about the novelty of the new toy, right? The new gear, the, the fancy lens, the, oh, I own a Leica now, whatever. Hasselblad, whatever. But it, it keeps that feeling going without draining your wallet and putting a bunch of cameras on shelves behind you that you're never going to use. Most of these are actually broken. Um, that's kind of how I chose what came on the set was broken shit goes on the set because I can't use it. And everything that I do actually use, I either use regularly or I sell. Another way to look at this, which is on a, like a minimalist, you guys remember the minimalism movement? I don't know if that's still a thing or not, but like if you don't use a camera for a specified period of time, you gotta let it go. Call it a year. If you don't use a camera at least once a year, it's time to sell it. Oh shit. 
By that logic, I should sell at least a couple of my cameras. Damn. Got me. Uh, but it's honestly, it's helpful. If you're not using the gear, someone else would love to use it. So give it a new home, and then you'll have some cash in your pocket to go buy new camera gear, film, get prints made, shit, buy a motorcycle, like buy something that you're gonna actually enjoy and use and love, rather than letting something sit in a box in your attic or on a shelf. Catch and release. If you have ever caught and released camera gear, let me know. I'm curious what you acquired and we're like, yes, it's mine. And then realized, actually, no, this isn't for me. This isn't the camera that I actually want. And you let it go. The surprising one for me, there's actually two. One was an M6 before they got expensive. I let that one go and I regret it. I should have just kept it and shot with that forever. And the other one, well, guess. What do you think the other piece of gear I regret letting go is? Comments, that's what they're for. Or join us on the Discord server, because that's where I hang out sometimes. Anyway, see ya.